Major breaking Second Amendment news out of Chicago, Illinois. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals presiding over the so-called assault weapon ban and magazine ban cases has just issued a major order in those matters. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American governor, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new best-selling book, Disarmed. What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Make sure you check that out. A lot of lessons for Americans and gun owners in the story of the Ukraine. Check it out. Okay, folks, huge news impacting the United States Supreme Court right here, right now. This afternoon, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the federal court of appeals that oversees Illinois, that is based in Chicago, has just entered an order which I have here in front of me. This order is really an attempt to make sure that the United States Supreme Court does not enter an order in joining the Illinois gun control laws, which constitute a ban on AR-15s or semi-automatic firearms, as well as magazines that hold more than 10 or 15 rounds. Okay, so what happened today is I'm gonna tell you what happened just now and what it means for all of us, including the Supreme Court. This afternoon, a three-judge panel uh, Frank Easterbrook, terrible on the Second Amendment. Uh, Diane Wood, terrible on the Second Amendment. And Michael Brennan, unknown, but a Trump nomination to the, to, to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, entered an order that issued an expedited, and this is the very good news, a super, super, super expedited briefing schedule of the cases in front of the Seventh Circuit dealing with these magazine and, and, and semi-automatic rifle bans. Specifically, the schedule that was entered in, the, in these cases, which are now effectively consolidated, by the way, meaning the Bevis versus Naperville case, which came out of the Northern District of Illinois, which is Chicago, and the various cases that come, came out of the Southern District of Illinois that were in front of Judge Stephen McGlynn, they're all consolidated before the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals now, according to this order. And there's now a briefing schedule. And the briefing schedule, for those of you taking notes at home or keeping score at home, the briefs for the plaintiffs are going to be due on June 19th. The government's briefs, by the way, are due on June 5th. So we're going to see what the government has to say on June 5th. We're going to see what the Second Amendment plaintiffs have to say on June 19th. And any reply briefs from the government will be filed with the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals on June 26th. There will be an oral argument on the morning of June 29th. Now, this is significant because June 29th is an oral argument, which is before the United States Supreme Court term ends. So here's what I think has just happened. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals was very worried that they were going to get spanked in some way by the United States Supreme Court for not moving fast enough or not taking this case seriously involving the Second Amendment. To avoid that, or at least to attempt to avoid that, the Seventh Circuit made this extremely super fast, expedited briefing schedule. The good news is the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals has taken this case very seriously because this is a super expedited briefing schedule, which is really telling the Supreme Court and everyone that they're taking their job, making sure the Second Amendment is honored seriously. Now, I should mention this is very important. Although the three-judge panel that just continued, and the downside to all of this, the bad news with all of this, is that they're continuing the stay of Judge McGlynn's order, which means that the gun control law involving the magazine ban and the semi-automatic rifle ban is continuing for the duration of the appeal to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. And the only thing that will stop that in the near future is if the Supreme Court gets involved and does something about it. But in light of the super expedited briefing schedule, I think that's highly unlikely. I think the Supreme Court is going to look at the situation and is likely going to simply deny the motion for an expedited emergency uh, injunction on the grounds that the Seventh Circuit is moving so quickly and doing its job and demonstrating that it's being serious and taking this stuff seriously. That's what I think the Supreme Court is going to do. It is still possible that there may be a comment or two from a justice, but at this point, because the Seventh Circuit is moving with alacrity here and showing they care and showing they're serious, I think the Supreme Court is going to give them a pass and say, well, they're working hard on this. They're moving super fast. We're not going to bother them now. We're just going to let them do their job. Uh, they'll issue a decision in the next, you know, many months, and then we'll see what that what happens at that point, and we'll deal with it at that time in the normal course. As I suspect, what the Supreme Court is going to do 
given this order today from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which I'll put to you down below. I want to say something that's extremely important to give you a lot of hope. The assignment for who made this decision about continuing the stay, meaning allowing the gun control laws to continue, and said in this briefing schedule, the three-judge panel here that just did this is not necessarily the same three judges who will hear the merits of the case. So hopefully these three judges, and here's where it's kind of quirky, right? On the one hand, it would be better if we had better judges to rule on this case. So we have a very good chance of getting a favorable ruling on the Second Amendment right to keep arms involved in this case. That, in many respects, is the best possible outcome. On the other hand, if, you get a, if we get a terrible uh, panel of judges that thumb their nose at the Second Amendment and issue a terrible ruling against the Second Amendment, the weird part about that is that increases the odds that the United States Supreme Court will step in and fix it. So it's kind of a weird thing here. Well, on the one hand, we always want to win cases in support of the Second Amendment. That's my view. That's my general presumption. I think that's correct. So we would like for a great panel to make a great decision in favor of the Second Amendment and to enjoin and shut down the Illinois gun control law. That's what we really want. But bear in mind that if it goes the opposite direction, the good news there potentially is that the United States Supreme Court may use this as the vehicle to step in and nationwide wipe out all the quote unquote assault weapon laws, because that I think is what will ultimately happen if the Supreme Court ever gets one of these cases. That's why I think a lot of these liberal judges around America and the liberal uh, anti-gun groups are trying to slow walk some of this because they know if it ever gets to the Supreme Court, they're going to get you know uh, spanked in a, in, a big, in a big way. I don't see how they're going to win these cases if it ever gets to the Supreme Court. And uh, that's of course what we're all gonna wait and see if and when that happens. But for now, the big news is the gun control laws in Illinois are going to continue in effect. That's bad news. There's nothing can be done about it right now. But the good news is the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals is rushing with uh, high speed here for courts uh, where they're going to have argument uh, at the end of June, which means they'll be able to issue you know, rulings a few months thereafter, uh, which in the world of law, unless you're dealing with a death penalty case or potentially a presidential election situation where you're on the eve of an election, this is extremely fast for courts to be acting. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens with the Supreme Court because that pending motion for uh, emergency application or an emergency state is still pending for the Supreme Court. That is still out there. They could act, but I suspect they're probably going to deny it on the grounds that the Seventh Circuit is now stepping into the breach to uh, move this case along with speed. But again, um, you know, we'll see what the Supreme Court does probably over the next several days. Okay, folks, hope you learned something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and check us out at, at Four Boxes on Twitter. And again, um, we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.